Welcome back, my dear sweet friends. How is everyone? My name is Emmy, my husband is Paul, and this is the channel Frugal Money Saver. We are an early retirement, debt and mortgage free couple living in the state of New York, and our channel and our videos just encourage you and try to show you how to live a more abundant life spending less money. And I hope this video does just that. We are all getting ready for the holidays. Thanksgiving is in just a couple of days. And Paul and I have been prepping, getting ready, and we wanted to share that prep with you. We are going to be cooking a pecan pie using no corn syrup. We're gonna be making homemade applesauce. We are going to be roasting nuts in the shell. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna be doing a little tablescaping, nothing fancy folding some napkins. I'm going to show you a cookbook that I have used for years to get me through this holiday season and just a bunch of fun and joy. So we hope you stick around. This time of year is just so busy and we hope maybe some of these little tips or recipes can help make your holiday just a little bit easier. We're starting our Thanksgiving prep, and the first thing I wanna do is I have a bunch of apples here, and we're gonna make some crock pot applesauce. I thought that would be a great way to use up these apples, and nothing is better than some fresh homemade applesauce with our Thanksgiving dinner. I know we have showed our little apple peeler and core before. I'm just gonna show you again, Paul's turning the handle, this little gadget cores and peels the apples beautifully. And this will save us a tremendous amount of time. So we put those eight beautiful apples in our crock pot and you can see they're just thinly sliced and peeled and cored. I put the crock pot on low. I'm gonna take a half a cup of water and just add that as well. Now I'm gonna cover this and we're gonna let that cook on low four to six hours, we'll check it. So the apples have been cooking about two hours. Now I'm just gonna take my immersion blender and I'm just gonna break them down a little bit because they're starting to get soft or ready. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can even use a good old fashioned potato masher. Works perfectly. And this is just to break them up a little bit as they're cooking. I'm gonna cover it and we're gonna cook it for about another four hours. This has cooked for six hours. Look at how beautiful, the color, everything. The original recipe I will link down below. It called for three quarters of a cup of sugar. You know I'm not putting that in. <laughs> so I have got a little bit over a quarter cup of brown sugar. A lot of you I'm sure are gonna say, Emmy, why did you even put the sugar in? It's a holiday and I know my family will love it. And I'm gonna take a half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. Again, you don't have to do this, but we're just fancying this up just a little bit gonna cook this for maybe another 30 minutes covered on low and then we'll give it a taste and see if it's sweet enough. This has cooked for about six and a half hours and you can see how thick and delicious this is. Look at the rich caramel color. Oh I am thrilled with this. Paul just tasted it. Was the quarter cup of sugar enough? For me it was, yes. It's It's got the sweetness that you need. The pumpkin spice was very good. Um, the, it was just delicious. Homemade applesauce is the best. So we're good. This is cool, by the way. That's why it's sitting on my counter. We completely let it cool. This was a total success. Okay. So now I'm going to store it in the refrigerator. Looks delicious. Tastes delicious. Super easy to make that applesauce, and I think it's going to go great just on the side with our meal for Thanksgiving Day. Honestly, what a great way to use up apples, and everyone loves applesauce. Now we're gonna show you how we make our pecan pie. Yes, I used a store-bought crust. 
Those of you who know us know that is not my forte. And yes, you all helped and sent recipes. I can't do it. There's just something. I can't get it flaky. It's dry and doughy. So you know what we do? We buy frozen crust now, as you saw in our last grocery haul. Okay, it may not be the most economical, but sometimes that peace of mind and the ease is worth the $2.50 for the two crusts, honestly. Here is our pecan pie recipe. And again, we don't put any corn syrup in it because we didn't have any. I didn't want to run to the store. This is an amazing recipe. Here it is, enjoy. So today I am going to make pecan pie, but we don't have any corn syrup, so we're gonna make it without corn syrup. And I think this is going to be amazing. I am making it ahead of time and I'm gonna freeze it. So let's start with our ingredients. I'm going to need one tablespoon of milk. I've got two tablespoons of flour here. I've got one stick of melted butter that has been cooled. I have one cup of packed brown sugar. I'm gonna need about a teaspoon of vanilla. And then I have a cup and a third of chopped pecans and two eggs. First thing I'm gonna do is take my two eggs and my stick of melted cooled butter, which got a little, a little too cool, I think but that'll be fine, it's still super soft. And I'm gonna beat these two ingredients until they are foamy. We're gonna add one cup of brown sugar, one tablespoon of milk, two tablespoons of flour, and we're going to mix this well on low. So we're gonna add one cup of the chopped pecans to the, our batter and one teaspoon of vanilla. I think pecan pie is one of my absolute favorites. If you hear the blower outside, Paul's doing leaves again. Our son is actually here helping me film. Say hey. Hello. So he's being a real blessing. So we just mixed this all together till it was incorporated. And you could see it almost looks like a corn syrup consistency without using the corn syrup. This is a nine inch deep dish and it is frozen. And I'm just gonna take our filling and put it right in here. This is gonna be so good. Look at it, it's almost like a caramel. And I always put it on a cookie sheet so that the bottom doesn't burn and also in case there's any spillover, which I don't think we're gonna get on this, but now remember that extra third cup of pecans? I am just gonna sprinkle those on the top. Now, if you had whole pecans, you could be really artistic with this and make a pretty little flower design, but I think this is gonna come out perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is put it in a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes. Then I'm going to lower the temperature to 300 for about 50 minutes. Here is the finished pie. It cooked for an additional 50 minutes after I lowered the temperature to 300. It is perfect. Oh, I am so happy. Now we're gonna let this cool and I'm gonna show you how we're going to freeze it to keep it fresh for Thanksgiving. Yeah, uh, this came out better than I would have hoped. The pie is completely cooled. Now I'm going to freeze my pecan pie. First thing I'm going to do is cover it with a piece of plastic wrap, just like this. Make sure all my edges are sealed. Now I'm going to take a piece of tin foil and I'm going to wrap it tightly in the tin foil as well. Crimp it under the edges so no air gets in. That's the other thing. If you put your pie in the freezer, you wanna make sure you're not gonna knock into it because of the fragile crust. I'm gonna put this away for Thanksgiving and it will reappear then.
The day before you're ready to serve, allow it to defrost in the refrigerator. Now I just want to show you some fun napkin folding tricks and hints. Napkins are a necessity on the table, but they also can be a beautiful accessory as well. So we're just going to show you two ways to dress up a napkin for your holiday table. Super easy. Use those cloth napkins so we're not wasting paper. We're not spending money on things we don't need to. And we're also going to show you our simple table setting. Just how I set the table, the dishes I'm using this year, I thought it would be fun to show you and what we're going to maybe use for a centerpiece, just to give you some ideas. I am going to show you how to take an everyday napkin and turn it into a lovely either utensil holder or in our case, we're going to put our chocolate Santas for Thanksgiving in it. All I have is a regular square cloth napkin. One side is shiny and the other side is kind of flat and dull. I want my shiny side out, so I'm going to put it face down so the dull side now is facing up. All we're going to do is take the bottom, bring it to the top, and we have a rectangle. Then I am going to take this side, bring it over to here, so now we have a square. Going to grab just the top two, not the bottom two, the top two, and I'm going to bring them over just like that. Then we're just going to flip it over. Now I'm going to bring the right side to the middle, just like this, and the left side to the middle, just like that. You're going to turn it over. We are going to take our little chocolate Santa and we are going to put him in just like that. This is another super simple trick for a napkin fold. Shiny side down again. You're going to fold it into a rectangle and let's get all those creases out. Then all we're going to do is fold it accordion style. We're going to go over, under, over, under, over, under, all the way to the end. And then all you do is place it in the glass at the place setting and voila, look at how lovely. You know what? This is just these simple touches that cost you nothing, but it looks like you took time and you took effort to bless others. So these are the plates I am using this year. I have had these for years. It's a Falsgraf plate in the pattern Madrid. And what I'm doing is just going in this gray and this autumn red color. And I thought this would be beautiful. Everything I have here, I have had for years. This tablecloth, I remember I bought it at a church tag sale. I thought the colors were beautiful. Got the main plate. I'm going to put my little plate in the middle. And actually, it costs nothing to just set a pretty table. It could be plain white dishes. It doesn't matter. It's just taking the care to set it. And these are vintage 1950s water glasses that I have had forever. I buy when I see them at thrift stores, tag sales. Then we're going to take our sweet napkin that we just folded together and I'm going to put our little chocolate Santa in there. If you don't have the chocolate Santa, then by all means you can just put your silverware in there and it will look absolutely lovely. Keep your centerpieces simple. This is literally a bowl of gourds in a autumnal bowl. And that could go in the middle of the table. Use items you have already. And here's another really simple, lovely centerpiece. I had these on my mantle. I got these little guys at the dollar store years ago. And this beauty was given to me as a gift one year. In the center of the table, Perfect. You don't want something high. You don't want something overpowering so people can't see you and you can't enjoy your company. And then honestly, once the guests arrive, I remove the centerpiece from the table. A lot of people keep it, but I remove it. It's more for aesthetics for us when they first walk in because I want room for all that yummy food on the table. Right. How we roast mixed nuts in the shell in the oven. This is great for any time throughout the holiday season to whip up a batch of these. 
They are so delicious. Just put them in a bowl on the table with some nutcrackers and let people enjoy. Very, very easy dessert. What we do is we pair it with some dried figs, dried dates, and a little bowl of clementine oranges. Not only a beautiful presentation, it's also kind of a healthy dessert too. Of course, there is the pies with it, but so here you go. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees. And what we're gonna do is we are going to roast this bag of mixed nuts. I hope you all are having a wonderful time with us in the kitchen today, because I'll tell you what, we love sharing this with you. So the first thing we're gonna do is anything like that, that has a cracked shell, pull them out because that will burn immediately. We're just spreading these out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in the oven for seven minutes, and then I'm gonna take them out to turn them. So 350 oven to start seven minutes. Nothing on them, we're dry roasting them. These roasted at 350 for about seven minutes. Now I'm just gonna give them a turn. And I'm going to put them back in the oven for another eight minutes, for about a total of 15 minutes altogether. You don't wanna overcook them because they will taste burnt. So we just want a gentle roast. These cooked for 15 minutes all together. And you can go up to 20 minutes, but I really wouldn't do more than that. Once the nuts have completely cooled, just take this cute little wicker basket, and I put my nuts in this. And once I have them all in the basket, don't they look just beautiful on their own? I just take the nut crackers, put them in the basket and then everybody can just help themselves at the end of the meal. And I put out dates and figs as well. So these came out wonderful. You should smell the kitchen. Simple roasted holiday nuts. I just wanted to show you the book that I refer back to year after year. It's the Betty Crocker Complete Thanksgiving Cookbook, All You Need to Cook a Foolproof Dinner. You can see it's all ripped. I bought it at a tag sale years ago. The copyright is 2003. It's got some beautiful pictures in it, lots of great recipes for all throughout the holidays, not only Thanksgiving, and I refer to it year after year. What I also do is keep inside of it recipes and grocery lists that I have used year after year. Bread stuffing, here's the pecan pie. And you could see, going back to 2018, here's my to-do list. I keep it year to year, what I needed to buy, how many people were here, uh, going all the way back to 2011, what we ate, and how much the menu has scaled down since then. Just a way that I keep track of how much I buy and what I buy. And every year I pull this book out and it's got all my info in it. So just a fun little way to keep everything together for the holiday. We hope you enjoyed this video. I know we crammed a lot into it. You know what, you're tuning in to watch and we just wanna share so much of our lives with you and we hope it blessed you greatly. We are wishing you all a wonderful, safe, happy, healthy Thanksgiving day. Enjoy the day, relax, remember to be present in the moment. Winnie the Pooh once said, we didn't know we were making memories, we just thought we were having fun. And I love that saying, and it is so true. We thank you for sharing this time with us. We ask that you give this a big thumbs up, please. It helps us so much. In the comments section down below, what are you having for Thanksgiving? What are you eating? Is there an unusual dish that you serve every Thanksgiving out of tradition or a family favorite? Let us know what your menu is. We would love to know because I'm sure in different parts of the country, 
we all celebrated a little different and also because of our ethnicity. I know we start with an antipast, which I will show you definitely over on Instagram Thursday morning. It depends when we make it. But stay tuned for that over on Instagram. And if you're not following me, head on over there. It's just one word, frugal money saver. We thank you again for being with us. Please stay well. Please stay safe. And above all, remember we love you and we wish you blessings. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving.